My name is uh, Anders Osten. I'm a senior uh, fellow at the Eurasia Center at the Atlantic uh, Council. And I have today the pleasure to welcome you all to uh, a panel on U uh, Ukraine's uh, energy uh, future. How can it be uh, secured? We have many big questions uh, around uh, Ukraine's uh, energy. And uh, we have today an uh, excellent uh, panel uh, to, to discuss this. We have uh, no less than five uh, people. Uh, Natalia Kassir-Buzhkovska is the co-founder and CEO of uh, the Ukrainian Sustainable uh, Fund. And uh, she will start with a brief uh, presentation of the energy situation. We have also uh, Alexei Repchin, so who's a former deputy minister for energy and environmental protection of Ukraine. I should say that both uh, Natalia and Alexei have uh, been uh, members of uh, parliament uh, before. We have uh, Aliona uh, Osmolovska, who's the director of government and stakeholder relations at the uh, NAFTA Gas of uh, uh, Ukraine. And uh, Yuri <coughs> Nidashkovsky, who until recently was uh, president of Energoatom, which uh, produces more than half of the electricity in Ukraine and uh, uh, is the state company with all uh, nuclear energy. And uh, uh, then finally, we have uh, Sergei Yevtushenko, who's managing partner at the uh, UDP Renewables, who is then the person who uh, will talk about uh, renewable uh, energy uh, with us today. I should uh, comment first that, um, as you know, two days ago, uh, the CEO of uh, NAFTA Gas was uh, uh, sacked uh, and uh, replaced by an acting uh, <coughs> CEO, uh, Yuri Vitrenko, uh, and by the cabinet of uh, ministers. Before uh, this decision, the cabinet of ministers uh, suspended the a supervisory board of NAFTA gas uh, for, for two, uh, two days. So this is an ongoing uh, uh, dispute uh, in Ukraine today, but that I will turn to uh, Aliona <coughs> uh, uh, Asmolovska about uh, later on. But uh, uh, Natalia, let us uh, start with you. Ukraine has substantial energy resources. Uh, what uh, is uh, the situation? What are the main obstacles and what are the a main opportunity for uh, Ukraine uh, to uh, maximize its energy production and improve its energy uh, efficiency. The floor Thank is yours. You. Good day, everyone. Thank you, Anders. Uh, it's a it's a big pleasure to present uh, the overview, general overview of our energy sector. I will start with my slides. Can you can you see it now? Uh, so. First of all, I would say that I have very difficult task, uh, an easy and difficult task at the same time to, uh, to have a general picture of uh, Ukrainian energy system, uh, because first of all, it's very, very wide topic and uh, I will try to show you the, uh, just the key features uh, to have uh, uh, understanding how, how it looks like and where is the challenge as well as this opportunity. So let me start, first of all, uh, to, to have a clear picture. First of all, we should uh, understand the, uh, what is the energy supply in Ukraine structure. So at the moment, we have coal, natural gas, nuclear, oil and oil products and renewables in our energy, uh, uh, primary energy supply. Uh, almost uh, uh, almost um, um, 29% of our uh, uh, our uh, energy supply produced by the coal, 
and uh, well the uh, the portion of uh, gas is uh, almost 30 percent which should be increased uh, because of uh, energy system transformation and we forecast that uh, gas uh, gas portion would be uh, increasing rapidly uh, so what we have on consumption side uh, actually the uh, the numbers is pretty the same, but uh, I would like to point out that the energy intensity high. Uh, so the highest among European countries and over twice uh, of the world average. So first of all, um, we should point out that uh, for, uh, that the energy supply here and energy uh, uh, energy consumption is uh, very inefficient. Uh, so uh, when we are moving uh, to particular uh, uh, industry in, in energy, first of all, I would say is that coal. Why coal? Because uh, it constitutes 30% of our, uh, uh, our consumption and uh, as the production of uh, our, domestic, uh, our domestic coal production declined uh, twice since 2016. Uh, coal industry was heavily damaged by the war uh, at Donbass and the half of mines now are within the military zone. So I would like you to see as a very important thing. First of all, we imported more than 50% of coal, which we need for uh, coal uh, generation, coal, coal, uh, electricity and heat generation. And the second, very important uh, uh, to know that uh, this industry is heavily subsidized. So I will uh, try to show you these uh, figures. Uh, you see that uh, uh, the production decline and the subsidy increase more than uh, three times, almost four times. So now the situation is as following. So we subsidize uh, uh, generation, which should be read, uh, read off and uh, uh, it become more and more heavy for our budget. So natural gas, very important part of our uh, energy system, almost 30%. Uh, we expect uh, uh, the portion of natural gas in our electricity uh, energy system would increase up to 2035. It's due to uh, uh, Ukrainian energy transformation from uh, coal to, uh, to other fuels, more, more sustainable, less, less dangerous for environment and the cheaper uh, fuels. I, we also expect that uh, as the consumption would increase due to the slow economic growth as well as as well as uh, uh, price on the world market will be going down so we will have more uh, availability to substitute uh, substitute another fuels to gas. So as you see Ukraine produced uh, almost 20 BCM uh, we cons consume 30 35 uh, last five five years. So we imported 40 BCM from European countries, and due to the uh, uh, due to the a lot of uh, uh, reforms in our gas market, I would say we now we have almost fully functioning gas market. We have gas market price on our uh, our I guess, stock exchange as well as uh, traders uh, as well as we also have now for market price on household level. And I hope this, this, this reform would be saved and uh, uh, a, a gas market would perform uh, well uh, next, next years ahead. So gas transportation system, uh, we have a certified gas transportation system, which was unbundled uh, from Naftogaz and now operated uh, separately. Uh, it shows very good results of their, of their management management as we uh, actually uh, increased import gas, uh, start using our uh, gas storages uh, uh, and make it commercially viable, as well as interconnectivity, which is very, very important, uh, increased with uh, neighboring countries, neighboring European countries, as well as we have so-called uh, regional gas hub. Uh, so here is a um, challenge for sure uh, that the, our gas transportation system uh, would be run out of gas uh, because of uh, transit contract end in 2024 with Russia and there is a question what uh, alternative gas sources we could introduce and how we can utilize it uh, to make it uh, to keep it running. I will tell it a little bit later. Uh, 
one another good story is uh, our guest uh, guest storages which has a quarter of eu storage capacity 31 bcm it's a huge amount for european market and uh, since 2014 uh, our gas storages are almost full of gas. So international traders, uh, uh, LNG traders, they keep gas inside Ukraine during over the season and sell uh, gas uh, uh, at high season. Uh, so I also would love to point out that uh, we have custom warehouse mode enables customers to sh store gas in the underground storages tax free for more than 1000 days, which allows to use this instrument easily and uh, for, for gas traders. Uh, so nuclear, just a few, few figures, uh, because we have good experts here in, uh, in our panel who will elaborate. We, uh, uh, 50, 55, 57% of our electricity generation comes from nuclear. And at this moment, we need to have a clear strategy of whether we will proceed with the nuclear generation uh, as uh, a lot of, uh, most of reactors were out after 2030 uh, and uh, it should be decided because after 2050 we will uh, have even or reinvest or to shut down these uh, power units so clear strategy and this industry is also very under finance uh, well, oil, consum uh, oil consumption and oil production declined. This is also a big uh, question because it's operated by state-owned company and uh, need to be a more efficient. Uh, when we take talk about renewables, uh, the things are moving positive uh, since 2014 when we unbundle, when we demonopolize this market. So it's, uh, the sector is growing rapidly and we have good figures now, uh, but we face the problem of uh, uh, payment of feed-in tariff. We have objective and subjective reason. I think Mr. Yutoshenko will deep, a little bit uh, dive deeper into this question. Uh, so I would like to devote the la last uh, three minutes to uh, opportunities where I see them and how we could introduce new agenda for uh, uh, Ukraine, uh, US cooperation. First of all, I see opportunities in gas market. Uh, we should uh, find a good partnership with uh, in big infrastructure projects. Uh, to increase the interconnectivity of gas transportation system with nearby states, as well as we can also develop uh, Black Sea port infrastructure for uh, um, gasification, uh, LNG gasification infrastructure. So here, uh, I, uh, I think we also could uh, import gas from US or other countries uh, where uh, we can buy it uh, at more advantageous conditions. Uh, so I also uh, uh, think that our understanding on the ground storages could be very good uh, a facility for US companies to keep gas over the season and then sell it to not only to Ukraine, but to regional markets. And uh, I uh, and we also have a lot of opportunities to be a, a regional partner for uh, um, Paris Climate Agreement and Sustainability Agenda. And as Biden administration back to this uh, uh, issue, um, Ukraine actually has a lot of opportunities in renewables, hydrogen technology, small nuclear uh, development of small nuclear reactors, which could be firming capacity for renewables as well. Uh, as well as electromobility, uh, green, green uh, tech, um, green fin, so-called green finance infrastructure. So I think uh, this, this, uh, this sphere should be uh, developed and uh, we could propose a good agenda for uh, uh, cooperation and be efficient in, in this. So I'm running out of time, uh, so a lot of things want to tell you more uh, in more details. Uh, but now I need to switch to another, to, to another uh, um, uh, expert who will be, uh, well, uh, who will talk a little bit deeper and go deeper into details from all this issue I, I also mentioned. Thank you very much, uh, Natalia. You uh, provide quite a clear uh, picture. Coal is the uh, being reduced, oil is not uh, so important, nuclear is very important, but uh, uh, 
a constant and uh, the two the growing uh, uh, kinds are uh, gas and uh, where a lot uh, can be done and uh, re re renewables. And the integration is moving from the, uh, the East, from Russia and uh, towards uh, Europe and also with LNG uh, towards uh, broader countries. Thank you, thank you very much. I would then like to, talk, to turn to Aljona Asmolovska, uh, who's the director uh, of uh, communications and the government relations at uh, uh, Nafta Gas. One of the greatest reforms in Ukraine uh, since the uh, uh, revolution of uh, the dignity uh, has uh, been uh, in uh, Nafta Gas. And in particular, the uh, pricing has been unified uh, in the gas sector. And uh, you have also unbundled that the uh, transit gas pipeline is no longer part of uh, Nafta Gas, but an independent uh, uh, state company. In all this, um, the Nafta Gas uh, leadership of Andrei Kobolev and until last year also of Yuri Vitrenko played a, a ma major role. But there have also been uh, complaints about things that have not been done. Uh, Nafta Gas had a big uh, loss uh, last year and uh, production has not uh, developed as uh, uh, expected. And it has also been a problem getting control over overall uh, subsidiaries. Uh, so what, how do you see the future now? Who is uh, really the, the CEO of uh, uh, the company after the, the changes in the last uh, couple of days? And uh, uh, what can we expect uh, from NAFTA, NAFTA gas? Uh, uh, what uh, changes uh, do you expect to, will happen in NAFTA gas now? Thank you, Anders, and I'm very glad to speak at this event. I uh, would like to, uh, uh, to thank also Natalia for giving a very uh, useful wrap up of what Ukrainian energy is about. Uh, gas has been an interesting uh, story and a success story in Ukraine since 2014. We have started with a dependence on imported gas for almost two thirds of our consumption, and all of this gas uh, came, came from Russia. Now we have uh, been able to cut consumption significantly so that our production covers two thirds of our needs and we only import one third. And uh, this one third comes from uh, dozens, or even, if not a hundred of suppliers from the uh, uh, European side from the uh, European Union. So this has been a major achievement of uh, Ukrainian energy reform. Uh, which has helped us to uh, ensure that Ukrainians enjoy the most affordable, the most fair prices in this region. Uh, when previously in 2014 we had to pay 30 to 50 percent markup over our neighbors, uh, now this year we have seen that Ukrainian VTP prices in the free market have dropped below NCG and in some cases even TTF. So this is an event which has never happened before. Ukraine was always paying too much. Ukraine was very much de dependent on a single supplier, which is Gazprom. And uh, we never could, could have dream, dreamed of uh, getting gas cheaper than uh, our counterparts in Germany or uh, other countries of Western Europe do. Uh, this year, this has happened, which is a direct result of the reform with which Ukraine pursued in the gas market. The reasons behind this wonderful change in, in the pricing is that Ukraine has been able to utilize not only its gas transmission system, but also the huge gas storages in the western part of Ukraine. And uh, following two pretty warm winters, Ukraine has uh, accumulated a vast resource of gas in its underground gas storages. So this was the first year, uh, the previous winter was the first year when Ukraine has filled uh, uh, its uh, uh, 30 BCM of its gas, uh, gas uh, storages to almost the maximum. Uh, however, we also need to uh, understand that about 10 billion cubic meters of that volume came from foreign traders uh, who chose to store gas in Ukraine, which is a great uh, uh, development for our country because people trust us. And uh, it's a great support for energy security because we do not have to buy that much gas uh, to provide for the security of supply in Ukraine. Uh, 
Um, another major development which happened last year was uh, the fact that Naftagas has finally been granted access to new uh, licenses, to new major plots uh, where we could uh, develop uh, and search for gas and develop uh, gas uh, projects in Ukraine. Because previously we had two, uh, two dozens of years basically when Naftagas was not given new licenses, we still operate uh, uh, um, licenses which are like for 70 to 50 years in operation and they are hugely depleted. And that's why this is the primary reason why gas production is not growing the way we wanted it uh, to, to see it in Africa. Uh, in December, we have received a major plot in Black Sea, which is basically all the Black Sea shelf uh, which Ukraine controls uh, after the uh, illegal annexation of, uh, of Crimea. Uh, we have also uh, won through a tender through a tender four major uh, plots under the production sharing agreements for the state. And we also have uh, have been uh, given the opportunity to buy a major pro uh, project where tight gas can be developed in the East Ukraine, which is adjacent to the uh, area which is currently uh, also temporarily occupied, occupied by Russia. So uh, this has been the year for Naftagaz when we received a boost to our ability to develop new resources. Uh, and uh, uh, we have been pretty happy with the progress and the pace uh, the company has achieved in this uh, uh, seven years since 2014. Uh, in addition to a very challenging year uh, where, where, when we had this COVID pandemic, uh, we indeed have uh, um, shown a net loss in our accounts for the 2020. However, Naftagas was able to achieve a positive cash flow and currently company is uh, uh, pretty strong in terms of financial resources. We have about $2 billion of cash in our accounts, which is uh, crucial for us to start developing the new land plots, which we were given by the state and gra granted uh, through the tenders. Uh, and uh, this funding is also very important to help Ukraine prepare to the next winter and make sure that we have sufficient resources in storages uh, to uh, provide gas to our uh, to our consumers for the next winter. I should say that these uh, uh, the the losses which we have recorded for the past year they stem um, from the uh, uh, regime, the special regime which is being phased out by the Ukrainian government, the so-called public service obligations. Uh, is a temporarily regime under which Naftagaz is obliged to supply to a number of uh, groups of clients who do not necessarily pay on time. Last year, we had, uh, incur we had to incur uh, provisions for de bad debt amounting to 42 billion hryvnia, and uh, was a was a net which resulted in a net loss of uh, 19 billion hryvnia. Uh, the uh, problem with these uh, provisions is that uh, uh, some of these debts may not be covered uh, by, uh, by our counterparties because they in turn work in a regulated environment where the state sometimes prohibits them from offsetting gas price increases to their clients. Like for instance, uh, district heating companies which provide central heating for households they were not able to revise their tariffs for two years because of some regulatory diff uh, difficulties and uh, restrictions. Yeah, Aliona, uh, we can't go in too much in detail, but this is, uh, explains the whole loss then for uh, Nafta Gas uh, last year and more than that. But uh, what do you see now as the, what will happen with the new management? Could you comment in any way on that? Thank you, Andres. I will, I will try to, uh, to, 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 to make my statement shorter. Uh, the, uh, both the progress of Ukraine in uh, diversifying energy resources and getting rid of uh, dependence on Russia and the uh, strong financial performance of, the, uh, of NAFTA gas in terms of uh, cash flow. It has been possible only because we were making progress on the corporate governance reform as well. Uh, Naftagas has been the first company where, uh, through the cooperation with the international financial institutions, 
we have received the first uh, uh, supervisory board consisting of a majority of independent directors. It has been crucial for uh, the for reforming the company that our board is there and it acts uh, in in the interests of the company the way it should. Uh, we have seen a set of uh, decisions made last year, uh, made uh, made this week. Sorry. Uh, which are questionable in terms of uh, um, of uh, how they were made because eff effectively the supervisory board has been suspended for a very short period of time because it was not uh, ready to uh, vote on the decision to uh, replace the management. Uh, currently, uh, so legally, we have a new CEO in the company indeed, and that was a decision of the shareholder, and the shareholder has the right to make this decision. However, they also understand that it, it is very important for uh, the company and Ukraine to show that uh, the company stays committed to the course uh, of uh, having uh, a normal, a reasonable corporate governance in place. Because this is important for both uh, protecting the company from political interference, for preserving this uh, uh, financial resources that we have accumulated, to avoid gas crisis next winter, and also for being able to uh, attract international partners into our production and our upstream projects. Uh, so thank you very much. I think uh, you've uh, provided us with the answer that we, we needed there. I should say also, you have the Q&A uh, function on the Zoom screen, and uh, I'm, uh, I will read the uh, your, uh, the questions and uh, comments and uh, try to uh, link them into our uh, discussions as we, we go on. And uh, one question I received was uh, if uh, Nat Natalia's uh, presentation will uh, be available and Natalia has just allowed us so that we can put it up on uh, the Atlantic uh, Council web so that you can uh, see it afterward. I would then like to turn to Yuri uh, and I have uh, one specific question uh, mm -hmm. to you, uh, and that is Nergatom's relations with Russia. You have uh, uh, generally moved from uh, being dependent on Russia and uh, Rosatom mm -hmm. to being dependent uh, uh, more on uh, Westinghouse, uh, the, the US uh, company with uh, substantial uh, presence in the uh, uh, Europe, but you're still sending uh, uh, nuclear waste uh, uh, to, uh, to Russia. Is, is, will that continue? And what is happening in this regard? So focus only on Energatom's uh, relationship with Russia, what that uh, uh, will be in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Ну, дійсно, свого часу було дуже багато зроблено для забезпечення незалежності української атомної енергетики від Росії. Well, thank you very much for this question. And, and in the first place, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Uh, dear moderator. Well, indeed, a lot has been done today to ensure the independence of Ukraine's nuclear energy sector from Russia. У першу чергу, чергу це успішна. Вона вже згадувалася сьогодні у виступаючих. Я би сказав, унікальна для реакторів. Российского дизайну диверсификация джерел постачання свіжого ядерного палива. Well, at this point, it is it is necessary to refer in the first place to the successful and I'd say very unique for the Russian design reactors diversification of nuclear fuel supply. And this issue has already been mentioned earlier today. І на сьогодні дійсно приблизно 50 відсотків ядерного палива для парку реакторів ВВР тисяча постачається з боку Російської Федерації, 50 відсотків постачається з боку компанії Westinghouse Electric. The diversification level we have, we have managed to achieve for today is approximately 50-50. Indeed, 50% of the French nuclear fuel for VVR 1000 reactors is being supplied by the Russian Federation and the remaining, the other 50% of the nuclear fuel is supplied by Westinghouse. Більше того, ми навіть пішли далі в цих питаннях. Moreover, we have went farther in these issues. У нас експлуатується в нашому парку реакторних установок експлуатується два, всього тільки два реактора ВВР-440, але ми і для них розпочали диверсифікацію джерел постачання ядерного палива. Which is more is that our fleet comprises two VVR-440 reactors, and we have gone as far as to initiate diversification of nuclear fuel supply for this type of reactors also. 
І ми єдині в Європі, які поки що виявили зацікавленість в такій диверсифікації, але в кінці минулого року було підписано відповідний контракт у присутності президента України Зеленського із компанією Westinghouse. Uh, we seem to be the only one, the only company in the Europe in Europe to have shown interest to diversify nuclear fuel supply for the R440 reactors. And I, I must admit that the process was very lengthy. Uh, but anyway, we eventually ended up <coughs> signing uh, the contract for the supply of the R440 uh, nuclear fuel with Western Gals in the presence of the President Zelensky. It happened the, towards the end of last year. So we have managed to initiate diversification of the supply too. <laughs> При реалізації цієї програми повністю всі конструкції реакторних установок російського дизайну будуть диверсифіковані з точки зору можливостей ядерного палива. This means that all the designs and structures that, that earlier, that previously were manufactured by the Russian Federation, will now be replaced by a different manufacturer. So the supplies of all the components will also be diversified. Крім того, була реалізована іще окрема програма імпортозаміщення. Moreover, we also implemented a separate import phase-out program. І в результаті сьогодні Енергатом не закуповує ні продукції, ні послуги російських підприємств, окрім про те, що ми вже згадували, це свіже ядерне паливо в обсягах, що забезпечують приблизно половину потреб українських АЕС і послуги радіохімічних комбінатів Російської Федерації і з тимчасового зберігання та перероблення відпрацьованого ядерного палива. As a result of implementation of this import phase-out program, Energia Atom ended up with completely refusing almost all, this, uh, uh, almost all the services and products of the Russian Federation, Federation except for the fresh nuclear fuel, as I mentioned before, and we continue to procure this, the fresh nuclear fuel from the Russian Federation in the scope as envisaged by our contracts, amounting to approximately 50% of the total nuclear fuel supply, with the remaining 50% being supplied by Western Gauss. And we still continue to procure the services of the, of the radio and chemical enterprises of the Russian Federation for spent nuclear fuel pro reprocessing and storage. So these are the two types of, of products and services that, that we still continue to buy from the Russian Federation. Thank you, I, thank you very much. That is, was exactly what uh, we needed. I would then uh, turn over to uh, a couple of questions about uh, renewables. And uh, this has been a major uh, concern among foreign investors in Ukraine in the last uh, uh, year or so that uh, Ukraine first uh, uh, promised uh, very high green tariffs for both uh, solar and uh, uh, wind uh, energy, and then uh, uh, tried to uh, uh, change those. Uh, Alexei Jabchin, if you could try to clarify what is it really that has happened and what is going to happen now? Yeah, dear, dear colleague, I'm really proud to be here among, among your and as a person who share like a very, very good experience of being, uh, as it was said, together with Natalia, a member of parliament of Ukraine, and then I was working in the executive as a deputy, uh, as a deputy minister, and now I'm advising to the vice prime minister and the minister of environment on the climate change issue and the EU Green Deal, I would say that the renewable part like for me personal, uh, like all the time, it's like it's one of the most important segments of the development of the Ukrainian energy market. And unfortunately, it is stagnating because of the payment crisis. It is stagnating because of unfulfillment of the auction. So not shifting from the feeding tariff to auction model, which was voted by our parliament, which could which could lower the prices for, for the renewables. We could show the real price for, for the renewables and could speed up and boost up the development of renewables in Ukraine. It was, it was really interesting to see the development of renewables after 2030, when the feed-in tariff will be over and the price of the renewables will be so cheap, it will definitely overcome the whole coal and gas and, and, and other infrastructure and other issues. I bet Sergei Yevtushenko will say from on the behalf of the investors who are really disappointed with the with, with the performances, with that the government is not fulfilling the uh, the memorandum. But there are obvious reasons uh, for this, uh, and I would say it lie in the perspective that Ukraine, as none of the country, is doing simultaneously the market reforms that you know countries like Western countries did for 20, 30 years, and simultaneously doing the decarbonization. So when you do this to stop simultaneously, when you're trying to decarbonize your market, not having the full, full, fully functioning market, you will see these kind of failures that we now have in Ukraine. 
But also I would kick, uh, kick out uh, like a couple of arguments in regard to the climate change, which is a really big, big question in Ukraine. And I see this trend of, uh, which were resulted by the EU Green Deal adoption a couple of years ago, by the decision of European Commission or European Union to have a climate neutral continent by 2050. And Ukraine is, is considered as a country in the European continent. Like we also, we also would like to align our policy with the EU Green Deal. We appreciate that United States returned to the climate change agenda. And also we submitted the first, the second NDC, which are the third 35% and it's a, for the first time it's definitely a reduction in our NDC and I see that the development of the renewable, the development of I don't know, storage, the development of hydrogen, the development of energy efficiency will be will be following this uh, climate change track. Yeah, but Alexei, what is happening with uh, the payment uh, crisis uh, for the renewables? Are the producers of renewable uh, energy being, being paid now? And according to the tariffs, are they being paid the original uh, ones or the cut down ones? Yeah, Sergei Yevtushenko will, will, will definitely uh, follow up on this, on the exact amount of payment, but let's divide to the payment that like we have debts for previous year that needs to be repaid and there are, there are decisions made by the Ukrainian government and Ukrainian parliament how these debts should be, uh, should be paid, but it's what not fulfilled. Uh, but we have another problem that uh, like there are new debts and we do not have uh, then do not have resources to cover these new debts uh, for payment uh, except the uh, increase of the price for the electricity market which is uh, dramatically unpopular uh, not only in Ukraine but I guess not in every single country and we have a new minister finally appointed yesterday with a constitutional majority and uh, like uh, in the Ministry of Energy, which is facing like dramatic crisis in many spheres, like renewable electricity market, gas market, uh, like coal, uh, climate change, a lot of stuff that needs to yeah, be done. But the ministry was without this. Uh, I do okay, hope it will be yes, solved. If I'm resolved, so the, it, it, and we yes, don't it, know how it will be, uh, be be solved for the time. As as you suggest, uh, I think that I should pass. Uh, uh, the, the same question to uh, Sergei Yevtushenko, uh, who is uh, a managing partner at UDP uh, Re Renewables. Uh, how do you look up on this uh, payment crisis uh, on the renewable uh, uh, market? Thank you, Anders. Um, uh, I will speak on behalf of the industry. So we always have a very exact numbers. Currently, the government, according to the memorandum of understanding, which they've been uh, they've signed with the industry, and they cut it retroactively 15% of our incomes, but they promise to recover all the historical debts by the end of 2021. And actually, the recovering of the debt should be in installments every, every quarter. And uh, up to now, they, uh, they have to re uh, recover 55% of the historic debt, and they did only 21. Uh, so actually, they are underperforming, but it's not about uh, historic debt and payments. Uh, our discussion with government is about trust, uh, stability, and transparency of their decisions. Um, you know, uh, they, they are not really winning a lot of positive economic effects out of this uh, cuts and savings, but they are losing the trust of many investors, including huge uh, institutional investors, such as uh, European uh, Bank for Reconstruction and Development, American OPIC, uh, suppliers of the equipment. Uh, all those risks would be included in the future prices and the risk for risk profile for our country would be reviewed and we would be perceived as a risky destination and risky country to do business with it will mean that we will have a more difficult access to a capital short uh, short term loans at higher interest rates which will lead to increased levelized cost of energy and we cannot get uh, at best prices uh, at the future auctions. So this is a sequence of action, sequence of, uh, of trust. And uh, with this, 
uh, with these obvious violations of the investors' rights, uh, government is losing the trust and increasing the future burden, the future fiscal check uh, for, for, for energy production. I have to say that renewables, which are cons currently constituting 7.5% of energy mix and 8.5 gigawatts are the only new fleet which was added to Ukrainian uh, production capacities over the last 30 years. I do not remember any large-scale governmental project which was executed in the last three decades. So renewables attracted 20 billion US dollars. Renewables added 8.5 gigawatts of new, brand new, uh, 25 years long uh, capacities to our energy mix and refreshed it significantly. So the short of it is that uh, the pro problems are not uh, uh, resolved as yet. We hope that something will happen with a new uh, energy uh, minister and that the industry is uh, uh, still very upset about uh, the, the situation. Uh, I would then like to turn to Natalia and ask you specifically uh, I've got here a, a question from uh, somebody anonymous about uh, that, uh, that Energatron sells uh, electricity uh, significantly below market prices. And I have another question that Centro Energo uh, also sells uh, uh, electricity be uh, below market uh, prices, and that this uh, uh, leads uh, uh, to, to losses. Uh, can you explain this, Natalia, what is happening with? Uh, the, the the electricity prices why these things uh, happen oh wow well, uh, that's a very good question as uh, uh we uh, we just uh, enacted law on electricity market in 2000 uh, 2019 uh, and it's not implemented yet fully fully implemented so market uh, has very big inefficiency uh, still has inefficiency and uh, well, the influence of big monopolies uh, is uh, still uh, substantial. Uh, so on the systemic level, I would say that uh, this is the problem of uh, market, market functioning, uh, but uh, there is also a lot of subjective uh, reasons behind these, uh, these uh, uh, price differences. state owned or under control behave on the market, uh, it's very questionable. And I think here's a room for uh, antitrust uh, authority, um, as well as uh, as well as uh, deep analysis of, of this issue. Uh, but it leads for sure for uh, uh, to make uh, Energo Atom, who is producer of the cheapest uh, energy resources, uh, uh, run of uh, funds and uh, brings company to, to debts. Which is not only market issue, but also uh, the issue of energy security as well. Thank you very much. Um, I think that that is quite a clear uh, answer. Uh, and I would then like to talk to uh, turn to uh, uh, Alexei and uh, ask about uh, uh, imports from uh, from Russia. We talked be before with um, uh, with Yuri Nedashkovsky about. Uh, uh, the dependence of Energoat on, uh, on uh, Russian uh, imports, but uh, Ukraine is also importing ele electricity uh, from uh, uh, from Russia. Uh, how can that be the case, uh, given that uh, uh, Ukraine uh, is uh, in war with uh, with Russia, and uh, uh, how can that be uh, uh, ex uh, accepted? I completely share your concern. I also think like if we have this kind of a conflict with uh, with Russia and I'm from Donetsk basically, and for me it's a very, very personal conflict, like how could we do it, uh, trade with Russia with electricity? But also Yuri Nedashkovsky could say that, uh, we said that we import the nuclear power, nuclear uh, fuel from Russia too. We import uh, diesel and petrol, so we we highly dependent from Russia, and this is why I'm working with the Vice Prime Minister on European integration to integrate Ukraine into NCE, the electricity network of the European Union, in 2023 to disconnect from a system energy system from Russia and Belarus, 
And this is, will be the best way for decarbonization of Ukraine, our Euro integration. And this is, will be the answer for our uh, climate change fight and also for our renewable production. We will be able to sell this electricity uh, to Europe. We will be able to sell more decarbonized electricity to Europe because currently we're selling more, you know, coal fire plant generation from Lviv, oblast that is connected through the Bushtin Island. But this will allow our Energatom to have additional fund. This will allow us to balance with the European network and to sell more renewable. And this will be the key for us. This is why we're working hard for this uh, to be happen. And this will be the next uh, battle to see, like uh, with the Gazprom, with the with the NAFTA gas on our gas uh, transit, this will be the next battle to see how Ukraine is trying to de-link with Russia, to integrate more uh, to Europe. And as I said, like for me, it's also an important factor of the climate change and the Green Deal into the urbanization and building a proper climate governance architecture, integrating you know, the carbon pricing, integrating more uh, more uh, renewable or more green, let's say, initiative, because we have feed-in tariff. Unfortunately, it failed to be paid. Our members of parliament voted for the green metallurgy, so to support the metallurgy uh, production that is, you know, okay, they, 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 they voted for this. We have the lifting up the NDC, the VAT for the electric vehicle, and Ukrainians have more electric vehicles than Russia and Poland altogether. We have energy efficiency funds that stimulate the carbonization and we need to have more of this initiative. And recently, the, uh, the Minister of Energy of Environment spoke with uh, climate change in way John Kerry on the NDC. And we do hope that the United States will, uh, together with the European Union, support the climate change fund, uh, which might decarbonize Ukraine and lead to a more green and clean Ukraine. This is our intention. Uh, uh, very good, Alexei. I would also like to ask you about uh, reform of Oblinergo. Uh, several of the Oblinergo have rather dubious uh, owners. And uh, what role do they actually pl uh, play? I presume that uh, Alexander Babakov uh, uh, is uh, still uh, owning a, a large number of, uh, of uh, uh, Oblinergos, and he was uh, his, uh, sanctioned at least by the United States as being one of the uh, main countries uh, for the uh, Russian uh, an, uh, illegal annexation of uh, Crimea. How can such a person still own, uh, own uh, uh, Oblinergos in Ukraine, even if he denies it and uh, uh, owns it uh, through uh, offshore companies? Yeah, it's right we have a Russian presence both in Ukraine and in Europe, we see this tension with the Nord Stream 2, and we are severely fighting against this uh, this project, which is not a commercial project, which is political project. And we do appreciate the uh, bilateral support of the of the Congress and Senate and bipartisan support uh, against this project, which is like crucial for for our independence. We have huge amount of challenges. We have huge amount of opportunities as to the reform of Obel Energy. I would like to, to speak about the grid of a future, because if we're saying about the digitalization, if we're saying about the smart smart grid, if we're saying about more renewables integration, like we don't we don't have this, like 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 we have a limited capacity over this, and we need to invest in grid dramatically for us to I don't know to charge our EVs for people to you know to be energy independent out of oligarchs and to have their solar PV on their roof to charge the I don't know, energy storage, energy uh, 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 vehicles, etc. So this is the key reform in Ukraine that I like to be involved with the colleagues who are now the panelists on this panel. And as, as I said, like Ukraine is a very interesting place to watch uh, uh, together. Thank you very much. Uh, you mentioned the Nord Stream 2, and I know, uh, Aliona, you have been deeply involved in fighting against uh, the Nord Stream uh, uh, 2. And what uh, danger do you see in it for uh, Ukraine's uh, energy security? Um, indeed, we have been involved in, to, in, in fighting Nord Stream 2 since probably 2016. And we are very grateful to Congress uh, for uh, adopting another set of uh, man mandatory sanctions, uh, which took uh, effect in the, in the end of 2020. Uh, we are very much concerned to see that the project continues building and that there are vehicles and, and uh, 
uh, ships which are engaged in uh, this construction process and uh, the whole Ukraine and uh, the Eastern Europe in, in particular, we are watching and we are waiting very much for uh, an action from the uh, United States to uh, make some effective stop for uh, of this uh, of these construction works there are very there's a very clear list of uh, entities which are involved which are violating the uh, law of the united states and we hope to see uh, that there will be uh, uh, action to implement the law um, this project is very dangerous for ukrainian energy security and national security as well because as you probably know when uh, Russia attacked Ukraine in 2014, it stopped short of the uh, trunk pipelines which carry gas to uh, uh, Western Europe through Ukraine. Uh, and uh, as long as we have transit, a reasonable amount of transit through Ukraine, this serves as an additional protection for us uh, from the escalation, the military escalation from the, uh, uh, from the Russia. Uh, that's why it is very important that uh, uh, the uh, uh, powerful countries uh, who, which protect democracy around the globe, that they take action. We know that the European Parliament yesterday has voted with an overwhelming majority on a resolution on Russia, calling in particular to stop immediately the construction of Nord Stream 2, because this project will redraft the whole uh, map of the uh, uh, European gas market. Now we are able uh, to source gas from the European Union and our neighbors in the Eastern Europe are also able to source gas from other suppliers than Gazprom. And this has led to uh, increased energy security and to lower prices in this region. If Nord Stream 2 is launched, then it will not only strip Ukraine of the uh, transit uh, revenues, it will also cause gas shortage in this part of Europe and uh, will make us very much dependent on Russia again in both our energy supplies and in uh, geopolitical decisions in uh, this part of the continent. Thank you, Anders. Yeah, thank you very much, Aliona. I would like to turn again to uh, uh, Yuri Nidakovsky and uh, ask you about uh, uh, corruption issues in Energa Atom. There have been uh, repeated uh, complaints and also cases with uh, previous uh, uh, people who have, uh, uh, what should I say, overseen Energatom. They have not managed Energatom, but uh, uh, been politicians taking Energatom under uh, their wings. Uh, uh, how do you find the situation now with uh, corruption in Energatom? Where are the weakest points and uh, what is being done about, uh, about them? Energa Atom is uh, one of the biggest state companies that does not have a, a supervisory board. Uh, what could be done about corporate governance? The floor is yours. <laughs> Дійсно, на жаль, ситуація така, що є всі підстави говорити про корупцію в енергоатомі. Well, indeed, the situation is like that, where, that we have all the grounds to uh, recognize that there is corruption in Energatom. У першу чергу, це проявляється в такій дуже дивній поведінці, в дуже дивній стратегії продажі електричної енергії енергоатомам на well, енергетичному ринку. In the first place, this um, um, this assumption is manifested in very weird, very strange behaviors of energy atom in the electricity market in selling in trading the electricity. Uh, I will mention just two examples for you to understand. Uh, if we take a day ahead market, то за офіційною це вже офіційна інформація оператора ринку енергоатом демонструє так звану нетипову поведінку. According to the official information of the market operation, in the day head market, Energatom is demonstrating the so-called non-typical behaviors. Він подає заявки з максимально високими цінами і значними обсягами, що призводить до штучного завищення пропозиції. Energatom would submit its quotations at highest prices and at largest volumes, thus artificially enlarging its offers. І таке маніпулювання ринком, воно призводить до того, що ці заявки в більшості своїй не акцептуються покупцями. 
uh, this practice is essentially, essentially constitutes a market manipulation. And uh, such, such manipulations leads predictably to that the buyers do not accept Energatom's offers. І внаслідок всього значні обсяги атомної електроенергії випадають на так званий балансуючий ринок. This is where the fun part starts. As a result, significant volumes of unsold nuclear electricity are dumped into the balancing market. І там уже дешеву електроенергію, атомну електроенергію уже з дисконтом з балансуючого ринку купують окремі групи трейдерів. And this is where the unsold nuclear electricity is bought up by, by a group of traders at very reduced prices. Uh, and such group traders are related, are attributable to very famous Ukrainian oligarchs. As a result, Energatom receives payments receives payments for its product for, for its commodity uh, at reduced prices and at very extended periods of time like we Energatom sells electricity today and receives the payment in a month or even a in two Ну, я ще хотів би сказати, що те ж саме стосується і ринку двосторонніх договорів, де Енергатом просто продає вдвічі дешевшу електроенергію, ніж ринкова ціна. Uh, I just wanted to briefly mention that the situation is very much the same in the bilateral contracts market because Energatom uh, enters this market and sells its electricity at a price twice as cheap as the average market price and uh, uh, twice as cheap as the price of other traders in the market. So the cheapest electricity is the uh, is the one produced and sold by Energatom. А відповідаючи на ваше питання, що тут потрібно робити, ну тут треба повинно потрібно працювати ще найменше за двома and answering your question, what one can do here? Well, I believe there are at least two directions and two areas that we need to address. Перший напрямок і робота в цьому напрямку ведеться це вдосконалення самого ринку електроенергії, вдосконалення законодавства в цій галузі. Well, the first area, and this is where the efforts have been extended, is the improvement of the very organization of the electricity market, improvement of the legislative basis that regulates the operations of the market. Ну, зокрема, це стосується, наприклад, впровадження системи моніторингу операцій на ринку, так звана REMIT. Well, in the first place, it is attributable to the, to the introduction of the market operations monitoring system, the so-called REMIT system. Це стосується впровадження закритих і безперервних електронних аукціонів з найкращими європейськими практиками, які будуть сприяти і прозорості, і ціноутворення, і унеможливлять саму ситуацію зговору. It also implies introduction of closed and continuous auctions, thus adopting the highest European standards. This practice will help us to ensure transparency in the price building and to eliminate any possibility, eliminate any collisions, uh, collisions between the, among the market participants. Ну і звичайно, що другий напрямок це треба треба взагалі подолати корупцію у самому енергатомі. And area number two that we need to work uh, is um, Energatom as such. This is um, where we need to eradicate corruption. В Energatomі потрібно впроваджувати сучасну систему корпоративного управління. We need to implement the state-of-the-art system of corporate management in Energatom. Статутом уставу, статутом Energatom, який недавно був затверджено урядом, передбачено формування наглядової ради. The Energatom Charter that was uh, approved by the government of Ukraine not so long ago uh, envisages the establishment of the supervisory board. І від того, які наскільки якісно будуть підібрані члени наглядової ради, дуже багато залежатиме від можливості подавання успішного подавання корупції в Energatom. And the very possibility to eradicate, to overcome corruption in Energatom is heavily dependent on the quality of the cadre of the personnel to be elected on the supervisory board. Hopefully the, um, uh, the, mem the membership will be high quality and high professional. This is the only chance for us to, uh, to overcome the corruption. Ну і звичайно, в Енергатомі треба назначати постійного постійного керівника. Більше року в Енергатомі, вже півтора року в Енергатомі постійно змінюються тимчасово виконуючі обов'язки. And the last but not the least is definitely there is a need for a permanent leader uh, of Energatom because it's it's been more than a year that Energatom has been managed by 
by enacting president, not the president, not the head of the, of the company, but somebody who is temporarily delivering the functions of the head of the company uh, in violation of the laws of Ukraine. But if I summarize your answer, it is uh, 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 make the market uh, truly open so that it uh, function to get the electricity prices uh, uh, right and uh, improve corporate governance with a strong supervisory board and appoint uh, uh, competent uh, management that are there stably. For the last minute, uh, Sergei Yetushenko, I would like to give you uh, one minute to tell what is the most important that needs to be done today in Ukraine to promote green energy. Thank you, uh, Anders. Uh, first of all, stability, long-term legislation, which doesn't change every half a year, transparency, the risking of doing business in our country, honoring the mem uh, memorandum of understanding with the industry and covering all the, covering all the debts, and the basic formula for success is lower risk, lower cost of capital, lower electricity prices for the final customers. This should be understood for every, every person who's in charge of this industry. Lower risk, it means better predictability. Thank you very much, Sergei. I think that uh, with these words, you su summarize the, the whole uh, session that we have had here uh, very well. And I would like to uh, thank all of you for uh, participating in, uh, in this uh, uh, panel discussion. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.